Hello everyone, this is Balu. Welcome to my channel Skillcave. In this video, I am going to discuss about the difference between laterally supported and laterally unsupported beam. Okay, let's get into the video. If I want to explain this concept in the simple terms, if you observe this arrangement, this is the length direction, this is nothing but the longitudinal direction and this is the width direction and this is called as a lateral direction. If you observe clearly, there are four beams here. Whatever the measurement you are going to take with respect to length direction is nothing but that is longitudinal direction and which is opposite to this longitudinal direction is nothing but the lateral direction. So, whenever the beam is supported with respect to this lateral direction, then it is called as laterally supported beam. It is just in the simple terms. If you get into the deeper of the structural engineering, whenever the compression flange is restrained against the lateral torsional buckling, then it is called as a laterally supported beam. Then how you can restrain this lateral torsional buckling? If you see clearly, here this is a compression flange which is embedded in the slab and also here this uh, whatever the flange which is connected to the slab through the shear connectors in which the compression flange is restrained. Here if you observe this, these are the beams which are connected by the braces so that the compression flange is restrained in the lateral direction. And also here these are the group of the beams which are connected by intermediate bracings. These are the bracings you can observe clearly and these are the support bracings which supports the compression flange against the lateral torsional buckling. These are the different ways in which you can restrain the compression flange against lateral torsional buckling. Here I am saying the word that is lateral torsional buckling. What is this lateral torsional buckling? I already explained in my previous videos also. I will give you the glimpse on this lateral torsional buckling. Whenever you are loading this uh, I section with respect to the major axis, transverse loading which is acting on the beam, because of the minor eccentricity or you can say high unsupported length or also high slenderness ratio, this beam is going to buckle in the lateral direction. That means whatever the beam which is in this shape, it is going to buckle in this direction. That means it is going to deform in the lateral direction along with the torsional buckling of the compression flange with along with the web ball. So, and I am always drawing this high sections only because it is the open section. I already told that whatever the open sections are going to undergo torsional buckling, not the closed section. If you consider these hollow box sections or solid sections, they will not undergo torsional buckling. Now what happens is, whenever you are applying this transverse loading with respect to the major axis, remember if there is only pure minor axis bending is there, then there is no chance of lateral torsional buckling. If there is major axis bending only, then only the lateral torsional buckling will take place. And here what happens because of this transverse loading on this I section, the section is not attaining its full material capacity and it is failing locally. That means whatever the bending strength of the section it has, it is not attaining completely before that only the section is going to fail because of this lateral torsional buckling. So, this is not at all favorable to the engineer. So, whatever the engineer will try to restrain this compression flange against lateral torsional buckling so that the beam is called as a laterally supported beam and it will have the strength and in which it attains the full capacity during the loading condition. This is regarding the laterally supported and laterally unsupported beam. Okay, we are talking in terms of whatever that lateral torsion buckling, laterally supported and unsupported, but we have to identify the beam whether it is laterally supported or laterally unsupported. How we can do that? Based on the codal provisions, we can identify whether the beam is laterally supported or laterally unsupported. Okay, let's get into the codal provisions of the IS 800. A beam is said to be laterally supported if the bending is about the minor axis of section and also section is hollow or solid bar and also slenderness ratio is less than 0.4. I already told 
that if the bending is purely with respect to its minor axis then there is no chance of lateral torsion buckling so then we can say that beam as a lateral is supported beam and also other thing that is whether the section is hollow or solid bar it is having high torsional capacity there is no chance of lateral torsion buckling in this closure section also and coming to the last point that is slenderness ratio we all know what is the formula for slenderness ratio that is kl by r if you increase the unsupported length of the beam then the beam becomes slender so that it is not having higher strength and also it will act as a laterally unsupported beam and if you want to decrease the slenderness ratio the only option is that is whether you have to decrease the length of the beam or you have to increase the minimum radius of gyration okay this is regarding the difference between laterally supported and laterally unsupported beam if you like my content please like the video and also share with your friends and also please don't forget to subscribe my channel so that i can do more videos in the upcoming days thank you